Hello Godot users, this is Wizard of Westmarch with another tutorial on Godot 4x. This time we'll be talking about navigation, specifically navigation regions, navigation agents, and as a bonus and the reason for this video, navigation links. Navigation is a way for Godot to determine how to path from point A to point B while dealing with any obstacles in the way. So let's say we take this capsule and we want to move it up here on top of this other square. The, what would happen is a navigation agent will query a navigation region or regions and come up with a path to get there and move until it can. And then once it gets there, it will send a signal to say, I'm done, at which point your code figures out what to do next. So creating a navigation region, what you do is you add the node to the, to the tree like you normally would. You add any child nodes that represent the collisions that you want to navigate around, navigate on top of, etc. So you'll notice the CSG box has use collisions. And then you come to the navigation region and there is this navigation mesh option that is currently empty. You do add navigation mesh. That does not finish though, because it still hasn't created anything. So you will notice there's this bake navigation mesh. Once I click it, there's this blue. This blue represents that there is a navigation region if you turn on visible navigation in the debug options. I recommend doing this when you're getting used to it. It makes things a whole lot easier. So that's how you set up the navigation regions and navigation agents. Important note, navigation has layers. Unlike collisions, there is only layers. There's no masks. So you have the producer that is the region set in this case to one. And then you have the consumer, which is the agent also set to one. So any, any layers that the agent is set to, it can query the navigation engine for regions that have information on that area to get from point A to point B. Okay, so now let's look at actual navigation code. Um, first, I have three markers in an array. These represent the path for the patrol that's going to be taken. What, how it works is, so here's the export variable. Here is the current target, which is a pointer into the array. So here in ready, what we do is say, hey, navigation agent, your target is some global position on the map. And specifically, you want global position because that's what it's expecting. Then. Uh, every so many process frames, so right, you know, so this is render frames, not physics frames, it will run get next path position. So it, it gets a smaller segment that is a straight line that will get us closer to the target position. Important note, you do not put this in physics process because if you do, it will actually error. I will show you that real quick. So run, you'll immediately see in the debugger that it threw an error. And that is because the navigation stuff is not ready frame one. So theoretically, you could do some shenanigans to wait a few frames before you start doing this. I personally just find it safer to do it in process because that way I'm not having to do any trickery that might break later. Um, but yeah, so it's doing it once every 20 frames because this is very expensive and you don't need to do it every frame. As you will see when we run the code, it still does good pathing even doing it once every 20 frames. So you might be able to do less, test it and see what looks good for your game. So for actually using this, all we have to do is take our global position, do a direction to the target that we got from the navigation agent, and then we just set our velocity to go towards that, run move and slide, which means I don't need to use delta because move and slide is handling delta for me internally. So it's going to move until it gets to the target end location. Then what you do is you wire up the signal, which you will see here, navigation finished. So I've wired that up to this method. And what it does is once you get there, it's going to say, okay, increment target position. If it's bigger than the array, 
set it back to zero, and then set the target position again, just like we did on ready to whatever the current array's position is. So that lets us go in a loop. So let's see that in action. So we run it, it's running, it's running. Note the, the position is actually up here, but because it cannot calculate a valid path to it, it will get as close as possible, determine that's good enough and stop. Now let's get to the reason I made this video. So we're going to enable these two navigation links and run the code again. See what happens. So it's running, it's running, and it jumps. Well, that's interesting. And then it comes back, jumps again, runs over here. Is it gonna jump in the same way? No, it's doing a floaty jump this time. Well, that's interesting. How's that happening? So there is a second signal that I have wired up on the navigation agent called link reached. So that's running on this code. That takes a dictionary in that is sent by the navigation server. And that the important thing is that includes the RID, which is a unique identifier Godot generates for nodes of the link. So what I have done is you will see here in this script. So there's an auto load called link globals and I'm setting link one on the first one to self and link two on the second one to self. So then what that allows me to do is I can then say if the RID for link two is equal to the one given me by details, do the big jump. So that's the one that's closer to the screen on the right. However, if it instead detects link one, it disables gravity, it does the smaller jump, and then it waits a second and a half before re-enabling gravity. So everything else is still running, but on a separate thread, it is using the continuation to hold off on re-enabling gravity, and that's why it floats for a while before it falls. You can use this for stuff like, oh, I want my AI to climb a ladder at this part of the map as it's patrolling. So it would start up the ladder climb animation. It would switch to a different um, processing to move up instead of using the one that's just using the traditional direction because you know how you want to get to the end point in that case. Or like, and you also have the option of making it single directional. Like you will see here, it's bi-directionals turned on. Let's say you had like a cable and they're gonna slide down it kind of like you see in the action movies, but you don't climb back up that way. So instead you would make a unidirectional link and then when it's building pathing information, it won't try to use it going back up. And that allows you to build intelligent pathing that does how you want it to work. So that's, that's the idea of the way links function within the navigation system. Um, so if you have any questions about it, please post a comment. If there's other videos you would like me to cover, um, on topics, please ask if it, keep in mind, I'm focused on specific topics about how Godot works. So like, oh, I don't, I, I need to build a navigation for my, you know, AI. I want to make sure my collisions are correct. Stuff like that's why I'm building these tutorials. It's I'm struggling with a specific problem in my game. I want to solve that. Not I want to build an FPS. How do I build it? There's there's other people like Fine Point CGI, Heartbeast, who build fantastic tutorials on how to build a game of a type from beginning to end. There's a lot less content of this sort. And so I'm trying to fill that hole to help people who don't want to know how to build a game. They want to know how to succeed at a specific goal towards building whatever game they're making. So if you have anything like that, just ask. And if I make a tutorial, I will shout you out as the person who gave me the idea. Hopefully this was useful and I hope you have a great day. Uh, take care, Godot users.